Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Darwin FPV Baby Ape and at the making of this video it's probably the cheapest quadcopter that you can buy not built or ready built and it comes ready built it reminds me of the Tyro 79 by Ishim which was $79 but you had to build that and it had some questionable components on there whereas this one looks really smart I think it was $69 when it came out, but just like everything in 2021 and 2022, the prices go up. So I think it's around about $79 now. There is a pro version of this, and the only difference between this one and the pro version is the camera, which suggests to me that the camera isn't quite up to scratch. So this camera is Darwin's own brand of camera. It's 700 TV line and they say that it's got a 1.8 millimeter lens. The pro version is like $10 more but I'm gonna review this guy you know with the stock camera. The pro version's got the Canex Ant, a very good camera but if you're like me and you know $10 is the difference between uh, eating or not eating that day, then, uh, you know, I'm going to check this one out. The camera doesn't have much movement in terms of angle, probably up to about 30 degrees to flat, but let's face it, if you're buying this guy, it's probably going to be uh, your first quadcopter, therefore that's going to be plenty. The camera looks like it's in a 3D printed housing so it's probably like a, a board camera and then they have just uh, 3D printed the housing for it there. It is 3 inch and the frame is a true X which means that basically motor to motor it, you know it's uh, symmetrical should I say. I think the frame thickness is uh, 2.5 millimeters. It's uh, carbon fiber. Um, I always like to do a bend test and yeah, uh, seems fine on that front. Uh, the motors, they're not the prettiest motors. They remind me of the original Baby Hawk motors uh, from Emacs. They are an 1104 4000 uh, 300 kV. They are meant for 3S and uh, this is kind of what I uh, want to talk about uh, you know regarding the price of this thing which is, is really good but it doesn't stop there because it, it doesn't come with a battery uh, so you'll have to buy some batteries for it. You'll need a transmitter or a controller to you know fly the thing I'm using the TBS Tango along with the Beta FPV Express LRS uh, 2.4 gigahertz module. There are cheaper options than that. I'll put links in the video description to uh, my recommendations. And uh, usually I would show how to uh, install a receiver. Uh, yeah, so it's only available uh, plug and play, which means that uh, you have to put your own receiver in there which is a little bit of a pain uh, but you know it's how they get the cost down and it's really easy to install uh, the receiver as well. Uh, Joshua Bardwell has done an excellent video on how to do that so I'm not going to repeat myself on that otherwise I would but uh, you have to take the top plate off uh, we've just got two screws here and two screws here uh, make sure that you take this 3D printed part off because uh, we have got this little micro UFL connector to the VTX and don't want to uh, rip that off. Uh, the soldering is miniature so you know it's, it's quite fiddly that's something um, that I would say uh, a beginner might struggle with uh, so that is worth noting but uh, other than that everything just you know looks uh, great we even got these lights here which uh, change in uh, brightness when you go up and down on the throttle um, of course you're gonna need some goggles as well 
Um, my recommended goggles would be the Isheen EVA 100 DMs. Uh, some people say, why not just the the EVA 800 Ds? Uh, the DMs, I just prefer. It's just a personal preference. Uh, but it's the cheap goggle. It's a box goggle, but uh, you know, if you're on a budget, uh, then that works really well. Uh, let's take a look at some more of the specs of this guy. So uh, we've got an all-in-one flight controller and ESC board. It's an F4, so uh, very capable. Uh, you do have to do uh, some setup. Again, Josh uh, did the complete setup, so um, just go and follow his guide for that. Built-in ESCs, uh, which... Are, I think they are yeah 15 amp BL Halley S uh, which is absolutely fine we've got a, a capacitor on the back here for noise reduction as well a 200 milliwatt VTX uh, which you know that's gonna be fine I you know I think I've gotten I've got over a kilometer with a 200 milliwatt. I guess you would say the only downside is this linear antenna here. Um, you know, if you were looking to buy this thing and want to modify it, then you could put a circular polarized antenna on there. But really, um, for me, I would just use a, a linear antenna on your goggles. And if your goggles have a diversity, then get the uh, Bandicoot patch antenna uh, from Menace, which is designed for linear antennas, and uh, you won't have a problem at all. The props are tension fitted, which means that uh, you don't need any screws, which is good because uh, if it did need screws, then they wouldn't line up with the holes on these uh, motors. Anyways, one thing I want to point out is the XT30 connector. So when I first plugged a battery into this guy, it was really loose, too loose. And the usual fix for that is to get like a pin or a cocktail stick. And uh, these two pins here, uh, each pin uh, has got sort of like a, a slice in them like that. And if they're too close together, then um, this will be really loose fitting. Uh, usually like with an XT60 you get a cocktail stick and that would splay those out and um, it would uh, fit much tighter. Now I tried to do that with a pin and one of the uh, splices just broke straight off. Uh, and this isn't a good quality XT30 connector which brings me on to another problem. In fact, if you look here, I can actually bend it. And a problem with early XT30 connectors, uh, be because the fact that, uh, you know, the lower quality ones can bend, means that you can plug the battery in the wrong way around because this will deform and fit. So, uh, for me, I'd be replacing this, why well, I need to anyways, uh, because it's not going to be making uh, great contact with just one of those uh, splices there. Um, but I'm going to fly it anyways because, uh, you know, doesn't seem to have any problems with the uh, connectivity. And uh, I did manage to get this one to splice open so it fits nice and snug now. I guess you would call this a toothpick or a twig, that's what we used to call them. Uh, I think uh, without a receiver it weighs uh, about 71 grams, uh, which is very lightweight. And then uh, with this battery, so 450 milliamp hour tattoo battery. Um, it weighs, I don't know if that's going to show there, but that's 114.5 uh, grams. So very lightweight indeed. Uh, so that's great for flying in smaller places uh, where you don't want to cause any trouble. You do get given a nice anti-slip mat, uh, which uh, works great. 
but to uh, secure the battery it's using rubber bands and with this 450 milliamp hour 3s battery it is kind of splitting you know when you see a rubber band splitting um, it's it's already doing that uh, they do give you plenty of them as well as a uh, kind of like a battery strap in the package so uh, you could replace that when you take it apart oh and another thing as well is it she's in Phillips screws rather than the hex screws not really uh, a problem uh, oh another thing uh, to watch out for as well is you know when, when you take the top of this off to uh, solder on the uh, receiver uh, what can happen uh, with this part here is the camera can you know flip upside down and uh, you not know about it. So with this being the non-pro version, uh, make sure that the wires are at the bottom. Otherwise, when you plug everything in, then uh, the camera will be upside down and you don't want that. Also in the box is a schematic of the all-in-one uh, flight controller so uh, you know for your various different receivers and stuff it, it shows you uh, where to uh, solder stuff uh, if you aren't using Express LRS uh, you know you're going cheaper like D8 receiver or the D8 transmitter something like that then uh, this will get you through it Oh, just one more thing, the props, these are the yellow props, but you actually can choose different colored props, uh, black, purple, and yellow. Uh, I'll put a link in the video description of various places where you can buy it, but uh, let's go and fly it. Actually, let's fly it line of sight. So I think that is something that I offer that no one else does. I, I love flying line of sight, so let's go and do that. Alrighty, let's go for a line of sight flight with this chappy. Blimey, it is cold and miserable today. A little bit of fog as well, so I hope some of this footage comes out okay. I'm starting off in angle mode just because, you know, the price point of this thing is going to be aimed at beginners. And it's really important that in angle mode it doesn't drift. Now I'm going to go into acro because what can happen is you know from sort of uh, vibrations and stuff through the frame towards the end of the flight angle mode could be like drifting and unusable but uh, it's fine, it's fine for now. Okay, let's see how much punch this guy's got. 450 milliamp hour tattoo battery, 3S. Oh yeah, that's got enough to disappear all right. Love the lights. One good thing about the gloomy day is being able to see those lights on the arms pretty good for orientation as well and uh, you know if you are a beginner looking to get into this hobby I highly recommend that you learn to fly line of sight not only you know just for the fun of it which it is as fun as FPV but also, you know, if you have any problems flying FPV, you lose your video, you've got good eyesight, you lift your goggles up, try and fly the thing line of sight back rather than losing it. Wow, this is smooth. It's smooth, it's quiet, I'm not hearing any flutters. This is just the uh, PIDs that were on there. I haven't made any adjustments. I changed my rates. I put my own rates in there. But man, call me impressed. You know, even for just a, uh, a, a line of sight quad, if you want, it's worth it for the money. 
but it's so quiet so you're not gonna annoy anyone can't even hear the local dogs barking which a five inch or a powerful three inch would definitely do and it is freezing out here it's minus two do one of my uh, signature power loops it's been a while since i've flown a quad you know, since uh, catching covid and some other stuff she loops nicely actually you really like these uh, green props i know the grass is green but they're sort of a uh, day glow so you know you, you can uh, separate it out okay we've been flying for a bit here let's uh, stick it back into angle mode and see if we've got any drift so uh no just drifting with the wind and the way that you can tell that is if i just let it go my it's not really you can see it has changed already because the wind direction is changing but if you yaw around and it uh, continues to slightly drift in that direction that that's how you know it's it's the wind so that's good news good news for beginners you can you know have it in angle mode if you like and you know start off there and move your way up I guess the, uh, the, the question really is just going to be on that camera. I'm guessing that uh, the fact that they already have a pro version coming out with the uh, different camera, that uh, I'm not going to be impressed by it. But we'll see. We'll see. It flies just super line of sight. Plenty of power. You could even argue maybe too much power for a beginner, but of course you can limit the uh, throttle, but you know, give it some power and uh, it disappears up to the sky. But anyways, that's the uh, line of sight flight with this guy. Alrighty, FPV, and already I can see the uh, the camera, the camera's field of view. Yeah, there's there's not a lot there. You can actually tell by there not being much curvature. It's actually slightly out of focus as well. I wonder if if we can turn. Yeah, the actual lens turns. Oh, that's uh, that's gone too far. If you've seen reviews of this guy before, yeah, look at that. I can. That's definitely out of focus. Let's use the bin. Let's uh, see if we can get a crisp bin. <laughs> Anyone ever said that sentence before? Uh, let's give that a try and uh, tilt the camera up. So I'm seeing I'm seeing a uh, spot there on the lens as well so possibly a bit of dirt on the lens okay we have got RSSI in the top corner we've got link quality in the uh, other corner that's the point I should pr probably make sure that my fat sharks are in focus I think they are that's, that's one eye yeah, fat sharks are in focus. But, uh, yeah. I think, uh, I think the camera's going to be the limitation on that. Right, let's just go straight for air mode. Arming now. Also a, uh, a slight offset on the camera I 
but it's flyable, you know, it's flyable. Uh, you know, on the plus side, not seeing much in terms of interference on the VTX. So that's really good. So, uh, if you have bought this one, oh yeah, we're causing problems. Let's go over here. If you have uh, bought this one, uh, then just change out the camera. You're gonna have to do soldering anyway. The tune feels super. Although, you know, it's uh, it's beta flight, so hard not to be super these days, isn't it? So, uh, running on race one. I mean, this, this gloomy day is not helping the situation. I don't know, let's move away from these, these people over here. I mean, the camera, it's not bad. It's not like it's unflyable. Just that uh, I think we're just so used to a uh, really wide angle cameras these days. The quality is not half bad. Watch the focus. I mean, the DVR is not going to look as good as it does through these OLED goggles, anyways. It compresses everything. Uh, but you know these uh, OLED uh, goggles they really show up the imperfections in the VTS all I'm seeing is just some tiny tiny uh, barely visible uh, crosses fly superb there So uh, yeah, I think I'm going to be recommending this one. It's uh, it's a far cry from the uh, what was it the the Tyro 79, which was good. It got people into the hobby, but it was uh, it was big. This is small. It's quiet. It's inconspicuous. You can fly it uh, around here and not get yourself into trouble. There's no one's no one's bothered about it. The reception's really good. The tune's really good. And uh, yeah, they have the pro version, but I'm not mad about this camera. I'm not mad about it at all. Yeah. No wobble in the tune. It's it's hard to tell. It's like minus two or something. A bit of a bit of a wind as well. If I try and do snappy maneuvers, this is not my go-to transmitter. I'm using the the TBS Tango as well. So uh, there's a little bit of uh, <laughs> me being a terrible pilot. Uh, let's see. Flight time, 4 minutes 21. I don't like these elongated batteries. Uh, they don't have a very good C rating at all. But uh, four and a half minute flight time. It's nothing to complain about. My signature cartwheel, not done that for a while. Look at these tracks here, turn them into mud. The uh, social distancing lines, as they uh, put in. Right, we should come in for a landing. Well, there you go, that is my review of the Darwin FPV 3-inch Baby Ape. Uh, I thoroughly recommend it. I put a link in the video description as well as a pinned comment if you wish to get one. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.